what's up everybody happy thursday hope all you're having a great day so far today getting into this episode of gh um first and foremost let me just say this i am so sick and tired of drew long neck ass i'm sick of him okay i am so tired of giraffe neck he is such a whiny penchant child like seriously as a grown ass man you already done fired this lady from the company gave her enemy her old position her husband done left her her daughter not talking to her what the fuck more do you want and he's still sitting here talking about getting revenge on nina like he is such a bitch and i don't even like to call a grown man that but he is a bitch like, i don't even like to demean a, a a grown person like that you know what i'm saying like because to call a man a bitch is just disrespectful but he's a bitch <laughs> He got bitch tendencies, okay? And I'm tired of it. I am so sick of his lank, lanky, long neck ass. At this point in time, I really hope Nina gives him the business. I hope Nina, he want to go to war with Nina so bad. And that's the sad part. Like, he's so bold when it comes to stepping up to a woman. You know what I'm saying? He's big and bold, but got your ass beat in prison, though. Got the shit kicked out of you in prison, but you gonna step to a woman, though. But you want to go to war with a woman. You know what I mean? Like, how pathetic are you? Just a clown. And I am so happy that Michael backed away from that. Michael was like, no, mm -mm, I'm not I'm not taking this vendetta one. I'm not going to continue this bullshit. And I'm glad. Good for him because he got more important things to worry about. He trying to win his family back right now. You know, he trying to get his wife back, you know, at this point. He still got to talk to Sonny and see if they good or whatever, you know, because he knew about this and didn't say nothing. So he feel like Sonny pissed at him, too. But I'm glad Michael backed out of this one because it ain't worth it. And that goes to show how pathetic Drew is. He can't take on Nina by himself. Oh, Michael, I'm going to need your help to bring her down. That is sad. You are a grown man trying to go wage war against a female, but you need another grown man to help you against one woman. How freaking pathetic are you, sir? You know how sad you have to be? You can't take this woman on by yourself. This is your battle. Fight it. You want to go to war with Nina? Go to war with Nina. But you're going to do it by yourself since you're the big man. Talking about, oh, he want her broke and alone. Well, she already alone. I don't see her going broke because Nina's too smart for that. Um, I don't see how he going to accomplish that feat, but okay. I really hope she busts his ass. I, I'm rooting for Nina on this one. I hope she whoop Drew ass. And I was so applauding Michael. I was so happy for him when he decided to step down as CEO. And Drew going to talk about, oh, well, I'm not accepting your resignation. I still want you to stay and all this. I'm like, Michael, quit. 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 Walk away. Move away from that fool and his foolishness. Because I'm telling you, this war with Nina may not turn out the way Drew thinks it's going to turn out. Because Nina ain't no slouch. And I see the crazy look in her eye when she declared war on him and Carly. When, once Nina get that crazy look, Drew, Drew need to brush up on his Nina lessons. Because for one, this is the same damn woman that induced a woman's labor and took a whole child out of woman cootie cat. What you think she going to do to your monkey ass? I just want to know. What you think she going to do to you? If she could pull a child... Out of Ava Coochie. What you think she gonna do to you, sir? She gonna pop that long neck off your shit. I'm gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> and I hope she do. I hope she do. Good good for her. I hope she waged war against his ass. Since that's what he want. War against a woman. How, you are so pathetic. Like, uh, Why is he up here? I just wanna know. Why is Drew on my screen? Like, I just, uh, uh. He made me want to just go shower. I feel itchy. I feel dirty now. Every time I bring up his name, I feel filthy. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, he going to run that damn company into the ground. He, he just ugh, despicable. So anyway, moving on from that. Thank God for Felicia. I am so glad Felicia was there to talk to little Adam because that boy finally got some courage to stand up to his dad. I like the way Adam handled that. Like, his father really tried to take his guitar. Adam said, no, no. <laughs> Adam said, bitch, you ain't taking this. You ain't You ain't in charge no more. Like, his father is so just abusive in every sense of the word. And I'm pretty sure he probably physically abusive towards that boy, too. If he hasn't been, he's, he get vibes that he was physically abusive at some point. He reminds me so much of Kiefer Daddy. Remember Kiefer, the one that beat up Christina? 
it's some similarities there. Not, you know, maybe not the physical abuse part, but it's still abuse. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, -uh that boy needs some good therapy. But I'm glad Felicia was there to advocate for him and his wants and needs and his desires and stuff. And I'm glad Jocelyn spoke up, too, because she told Felicia, like, he can't stand up to his father alone. He need help. And I'm glad Felicia gave him that courage to stand up to his daddy because he do got a second chance at life. And it's up to him now what he does with it. Um, So I'm glad he stood up to his father like he stood on big business with his father. He was like, listen, I'm going back to PCU. I'm not going back home with you. I'm going back to school. And, and, and the school got a good music department. His daddy was like, oh, so who going to pay for that shit? I love how Adam bucked up against him. He was like, sure, I get a job. Do what I got to do. I said, I know that's right, little Adam. And I'm glad he apologized to Jocelyn because Jocelyn, you know, she really been an advocate herself for him. You know, before Felicia even came in the picture, Jocelyn was already advocating for him. And I'm glad that Jocelyn stood up to his little punk ass daddy. Somebody needed to. Um, so good for that boy. You know, I hope he continues to find strength and continue to stand up to his daddy because I got a feeling this may not be the, you know, the end of it. It might not be over with because, you know, men like his father, they don't back down easily. And speaking of parents, where his mom at? You know, his daddy was there with the mom at. So this boy all in the hospital about to kill himself. Why the mama didn't come? That's what was weird to me. Why his mom's like, where is his mother? She didn't care. She didn't bother to show up or something. Them people crazy. I'm going to tell you. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. I ain't going to lie to you. I enjoyed the scenes with Lois and Tracy and BLQ and all them playing the wedding. I ain't going to lie. I like Lois's ideas for the wedding. I really did. I'm sitting back listening to him. I said, okay, that's cute ideas. You know, I like it. I see it getting married in, you know, the hometown. And she was like, oh, we're going to do it under, we're going to have a reception and stuff under the Brooklyn Bridge and all this by, you know, Statue of Liberty. Like she was just mouthing off. I said, go ahead. Lois had big plans for this wedding. I don't blame her because BLQ is her only child. So I don't blame her. But I also can't blame BLQ. You know, BLQ didn't want that type of wedding. You know what I'm saying? As much as she loved her old neighborhood and her family and stuff, she didn't want to get married there. And it was funny because she really thought Tracy was going to say no to all that. And believe you me, Tracy was chomping at the bit to chime in. <laughs> it took an act of God to get Tracy to be quiet on that stuff. Because, you know, Tracy ain't like none of those ideas. <laughs> Tracy looked like she was chomping at the bit to object to every little thing Lois wanted to do. But she said, no, I promise Gregory I'm being my best behavior. <laughs> it took every fiber in that woman being not to say nothing. I could see Tracy face. She was like, uh-uh, this is tacky. <laughs> I know in her mind, Tracy was thinking, so you want them to get married and Ben's her? I know Tracy was thinking this is going to be every bit of tacky. But I like the idea, though. I thought it was cute. Though. I thought it was a fun idea. Um, But I get it, though. You know, BLQ wanted what she wanted and stuff like that. And I'm glad Lois wasn't mad about it. You know, she probably was a little disappointed because that is her only child. But it's her wedding, not, you know, Lois's. And I'm glad Lois realized that. But I did like the whole, you know, party idea that they had, you know, for the night before the wedding. Or whatever, for the rehearsal dinner and all that type of stuff. You know, because Tracy was like, well, shit, we could recreate. Coney Island. Lois was like, no, fuck recreating it. She said, how about we hop on that expensive jet of the Quartermains and fly to Coney Island and rent the park out? I said, oh, y'all got big ideas. I said, okay, I like that idea. But Miss Lois, who's paying for that? Renting out Coney Island, I'm sure, is not cheap. So are you writing the check for this or is the Quartermains? Because I know good and well Chase ain't writing no check. Chase ain't got no coin like that. Um, But I enjoyed it, though. I enjoyed those scenes. I thought those scenes were pretty dope. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. My heart broke. I felt real bad for Trina. I felt bad for her. Like when she thought Spencer, you know, when she found out Spencer was being presumed dead, I felt real bad for her. Like, you could see she did not want to say goodbye. But I love that Trina didn't let that stop her. Like, Trina know in her heart Spencer ain't going. She know it. Even though the French police pretty much saying with the drugs that Spencer had in his body that Esme gave him, plus the temperature of the water, they didn't think he could survive that. But I'm like, y'all must not know. That's a Cassidon. Cassidons don't die. They multiply. Um, 
Spencer ain't dead. That man coming back. <laughs> Cassidy's always got a knack for popping up from the dead. Even when you think they're goners, they pop back up again. You bet as Savros and Helena and all them. And Victor and all them, they done popped up how many times? And I'm pretty sure Victor Raz probably ain't even really dead. Um, you know, they find ways. They cast it on. But I felt bad for her. And I'm glad, you know, Portia and everybody was there for her. And I'm glad, you know, Portia kept her, her Spencer hate to a, to a bare minimum. Um, I believe everything Portia said. I believe everything Portia said when she was like, you know, when she wanted Spencer out of Trina's life, it wasn't in that manner. Naturally, naturally, she didn't want the boy dead. You know what I'm saying? She wanted him out of her life as in, you know, you on the other side of the world and Trina over here. So I get it. But I'm I'm also happy that at least Portia gave him, you know, his props and was like, you know, he did save my daughter. You know, he's a hero because he did. He saved her more than once, you know, from Esme's clutches and from Victor and stuff like that. So. You know, I understand she didn't care too much for him, but at least she gave him that much because that's the least she can do. You know, yeah, Spencer had his issues, but the one thing that remained true was he was all about Trina. You know, he, he would go to hell and, hell and back for that girl. And he's proven that time and time again. Even when he was at, acting an ass, he proved that he was down for her. And, you know, that's that love that Trina is holding on to. I felt bad, though, man. I was like, damn. It was so sad, though, when the shore, they showed that camera shot of the shore and that little dove washed up on shore. I was like, oh, but that was a clue. I said, yep, Spencer coming back. He ain't no going. He going to pop back up somewhere. And I hope this is a lesson for Laura that um, she need to stick up for her grandson more. You know, I felt bad for her, too. You know, to think that your grandson is lost now, like he's just gone, you know. But I know deep down her and Trina, deep down in the depths of their heart, they know he not going. But hopefully this is a lesson for her to stick up for her son, you know, her grandson more. Because she just seemed like she never really stuck up for him. Even when um, Portia was being rude about him and stuff in her face, she never defended him, like, at all. And that didn't sit well with me. I'm like, you know, Spencer got his issues, but that's still your grandson. You don't let nobody down talk him, especially not in your presence. That's just something you don't do. Um... So I wasn't a fan of that, but I feel bad for Laura, too, because, you know, she done been through this before, thinking that her son was dead. Now she got to go through thinking that her grandson is dead now. Like, that's a lot to be dealing with. So I can't say I blame her. I know she just going through it. Um, But, yeah, those scenes with Trina really, like, tore me up. They really tore me up because I don't see how she going to bounce back from this. Because it's going to be a rough couple of weeks and months for her. Until he come back, it's going to be rough. Um, but anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought. And I will see you all later. Have a great night. Peace.